Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, December 5th, 2021. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Fit and Determined Length, episode number 627. Uh, and it's that time again, folks. It's time to find out. Oh, what a November it's been. We had Thanksgiving, which I spent playing Final Fantasy XIV during my vacation time for two weeks. After uh, managing nesting people for two two weeks before that, actually several weeks before that, because I was doing it for several months while we had a bunch of people in nesting. Still in nesting, but the person who was meant to actually be the person who was doing in nesting, we got down to enough more uh, 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 desirable number of people in nesting. So now he gets to take care of it all by himself. And then I just jump in to, to fill in when he's out for whatever reason uh, on occasion. Uh, but I'm kind of back to normal on that. Uh, I come back and I look at everybody's uh, uh, quality scores and I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I don't know. So we ended up having performance reviews <laughs> <laughs> for a few people. Fortunately, I didn't have to do them. I just witnessed one. Mm. Um, uh, because I don't, I don't think I'm ready for performing performance reviews. But uh, are you are you heading into a leadership role? No, okay. I, I I specifically had told people I do not want to be a lead. I do okay. not. I do not. Trainer, sure. Lead, no, no. Good to know. But you know, I'm getting. I'm still kind of. I'm second in command in some sense. <laughs> in any case, you're <laughs> a number two. I am a number two. Who does number two work for? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, now. And then, just last Friday, early access for uh, Final Fantasy XIV and Walker started. And I feel nostalgic because it really feels like Wrath of the Lich King launch days. Where it would take you forever to log in and then sometimes you wouldn't be able to log in. Because there's so many mm. people logging in. And I'm like, yeah, this pandemic didn't help <laughs> enough that Square Enix could funnel some money in servers <laughs> to, to, to basically get Final Fantasy 14, which wasn't as that big compared to World of Warcraft. Mm. Um, uh, right now, they kind of need to get up to those World of Warcraft levels. So, right. somebody got distracted. Totally did. Love in the backdrop. So adorable. What? The backdrop on the... On our video. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, that. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. That shit. So <laughs> late to the last last year. Any guys and Walker launched. So I've been on and off uh trying to get through the Ann Walker uh main story quests and uh breaking on some of the new classes and such, so or jobs. They're not called classes, jobs. They're they're classes. It's just different nomenclature. Um otherwise, uh made myself a Thanksgiving uh uh leftover casserole with not leftover food, <laughs> fresh food. Nice. Uh, did some did some slight changes. I'm like, look, this re recipe doesn't say anything about gravy. I added gravy to it. It doesn't say anything about cranberry sauce. So I took the cra took some cranberry sauce and kind of actually just kind of like put that on top of the casserole, like not necessarily baked it with it, but just the kind of frosting. I don't know. And so I have had basically a complete Thanksgiving dinner in a casserole form. Nice. I did use ground turkey, though. So I don't know if that means anything, but it was good. Maybe, maybe make that again. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty boring. Damon, how about you? Oh, well, let's see. Where to begin? Um, well, we can actually go back a little bit, because technically this happened after we recorded the episode, but not before it aired. Welcome to Timey Wimey. Um, so I visited AJ over Halloween weekend. Um, um, enjoyed that weekend thoroughly. Got to hang out with him. Um, spend some time... Um, uh, eating a lot of really good food, um, getting to talk and, and, you know, enjoy each other's company, and also went to the Baltimore Eagle, which was technically my first time at a bar in over a year. So, um, yeah, so that was fun. Not really. It was a fun time, but... It was complicated because they said they were requiring vaccinations and masking, but they weren't really enforcing it. So fortunately, though, ben, uh, ben, AJ and I were out on a patio, so we, I think we were okay. And I wore my mask for the most part, but at some point, it just got to be too much. I need to wash that mask, by the way, because it smells like cigars and cigarettes. Um, anywho. Um, Thanksgiving, I'll just jump to another holiday. Um, I ended up staying home uh, for the second time in a while. Um, uh, long story short-ish, I called my mom after booking my bus ticket to get to Louisville. And she asked me, are you sure you want to come? Because due to the pandemic, um, things were shifting. Uh, my one of my cousins was actually hosting it in her two bedroom apartment, and um, my mom pretty much made it seem like it was just going to be her, my cousin, my cousin's boyfriend, and her mother, and that was really going to be it. I come to find out that wasn't all. My brother ended up coming, and his wife uh, went, and a few other cousins showed up. Um, not the big family gathering that we've had in the past, but we had a good amount of people there. Um, or they had a good amount of people there. Um, so I was like, you know, it sucks a little bit, but hey, um, I got to spend time with Jim again. Jim made a very wonderful dinner. Um, and um, it was actually really good. And yeah, so that was that. Uh, it was kind of a thrown together Thanksgiving dinner, but it was worth it. It was very good. And then finally, um, just this weekend, if you are a patron, you will hear I was tired um, because um, this weekend I got to judge um, the um, Cincinnati Leather competition. Um, this is my second time judging and 
fortunately, it was um, a very interesting class. I had an amazing time. Um, if you catch up on Facebook, I just posted something a little bit earlier today. But reality is we had six amazing contestants. They were all really great in their own ways. And um, we have a new Ms. Cincinnati Leather. She's the first Ms. Cincinnati Leather. Um, they had opened it to all genders back in 2019. And since then, we've had a mixed Cincinnati Leather, someone who was non-binary, and now we have a Ms. So... Very cool, very awesome. We're definitely um, having, we're moving, making strides to move forward and um, have this city be a really awesome city in regards to the kink and leather community. So, yay for that. Um, uh, I loved being a part of the judging panel. I loved um, doing it, but man, oh man, was it tiring. Um, and as someone who has not been out in a while and see, especially in my city, um, it was draining in a sense, just being around all those people. Um, but it was good because I had, again, like these were people I hadn't seen in like ever. And yeah, that, that was the kind of best part for me. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it. Congratulations, Luna Bones. She's the new Ms. Cincinnati Leather. And yeah. I have concerts next week. This weekend. Oh, God, this weekend. <laughs> Welcome to December. Uh, oh, hey, Gary. <laughs> My favorite part of that was the reality set in revelation at the end. And you were like, oh, shit. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm at the year end slide after the busyness. Um, November was actually rather busy. I, uh, the beginning of the month, I took a week off, uh, went on vacation. Got to spend some good time with some good people. Um people a week or two after I got back at work asked me like how my vacation was and I said it was all right and they said you don't seem really excited or like you know that you had a you know a really good time and I said well what I came to realize and it took some time to process was in my previous career when I would go on vacation any projects I was working on would either fall into one of two camps it would be the projects are done and submitted and and like taken care of so they're just not there anymore or when i leave and then when i return i have a definitive like say four weeks six weeks before i really have to have a deliverable on something and so i can ease back into things and what i realized is that th with this job that was not the case at all i had mm -hmm. to have some things done and i felt really stressed because having taken the weekend off i had virtually two weeks or 10 working days to pull together the World AIDS Day Memorial Program that I was chairing with the HIV task force here to get done. And I didn't feel like that was a whole lot of time. And I also have to own that, like, um, I took on a lot of responsibility. It was the first time I was going to be doing it. Um, and we had a bigger space. I wanted to make a bigger impact. So, um, you know, using an auditorium, there was some theatricality to it in terms of like lighting. There was this whole audiovisual aspect of things. So it was just a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So mm. that uh, took up the majority of the month. Plus, it's the federal uh, spending down portion as we reach the end of the year. So I'm trying to balance that. Um, the outcome was. The World AIDS Day program went very well. Uh, my boss, my boss's boss, and my boss's boss's boss, all three levels uh, above me were there. Um, they all complimented. Uh, word had been passed around that it was done very well um, as other people came and gave me kudos for the program. Uh, they liked the things that I had done. Um, some people personally reached out to me after the event. Um, we had a reception that night where I got a lot of good feedback, but some people privately said, I really like this and this aspect and it was very touching. So yeah, 
um, hey. all the stress and um, paid off. I, I basically worked almost 60 hours this past week. Um, I had long days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the day of was a super long day. And then I had the U.S. conference on HIV AIDS Thursday and Friday. Um, and that was nine hours a day on top of like coming in the mornings and doing some other stuff. So, yeah, it was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm. And now we're down to the last couple of weeks of the month. Yay. Leading into the end of the year. Um, so things are a little bit smoother. Uh, my big project I was going to do in October uh, that I didn't get to was to um, work on a new theme re-implementation design for the website for the task force. So I'll be doing that majority of like this coming week. So yeah, um, I'm pretty busy. And this weekend, I did um, because Vince um, got caught up. Well, he helped me catch up. So he's been doing a lot of gaming recently, especially on Twitch with Final Fantasy 14. And so I don't know anything that much about it. And I was like, how do I learn the backstory, the lore, uh -huh. all that kind of stuff? And he was like, oh, he's like, well... He's like, there are hundreds upon hundreds of hours of gameplay and story development, blah, blah, blah. And I was like. I mean, there's a, an entire uh, 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 free trial, which includes uh, Rumble nope, Born nope, and the uh, nope. critically acclaimed nope. uh, expansion Heavensward. There's also, we're, we're there's, also this, there's also a bunch of videos on our own very own channel of me playing through the... Uh, through everything all the way up to Enwar or up through Shadowbringer. So Right. But the the point is for me as a non game player to just get a background on the story, the world, and the lore. So when I watch him play Twitch, I have some freaking clue as to who, what, where, when is happening, and I can make some assemblance of, of sense of it. Um so anyways uh, we did spend time hanging out this weekend, and I watched roughly a half dozen hours of YouTube uh, recap kind of highlighting stuff. Um, so, yeah, that was really interesting to see the multiple chapters, various iterations. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but... I now am theoretically caught up to Endwalker, so I can understand what came before this current new release chapter and um, yeah, but where things are at. So I can understand the hype and the excitedness and the craziness that people are posting about online, how there's a, what is it, early entrance? I don't know. Early what access. This. Yeah, the early access period and That's how the early access weekend. period has all these issues you were referencing um, with thousands upon thousands of people waiting in queue to get into the game. So, yeah. and, and the login, the <laughs> queues uh, give you this uh, an error and booting this out because there's like over 17,000 people trying to log in the game at, on a data center. Yeah. 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 I actually saw that firsthand yesterday. Um, while hanging out and, and conversing um, with uh, another acquaintance and, and staying, uh, I was at uh, Vince's and like, you know, just hanging and watching. He's attempting to get logged in and keeps like <laughs> either getting bounced out or is re uh, shifted in the queue. So yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of that. So I agree oh. with you. Like, I'm not quite sure what the, the tech sitch is as to why they're having such difficulty with giving all the early access folks the ability to get in. I mean, one would say it's simply numbers, like they totally missed the mark on predicting how many people in that grouping would want to play. But at the same time, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Like, it doesn't strike me like as something that ooh, that's simplistic. So I don't know. I don't know. We shall see, I guess. I, I really think it's because this is the first expansion where they've, I mean, they've already had previously seen a uh, influx of players, especially from WoW, because 
Blizzard is going through Activision Blizzard uh, is going through a bunch of cluster stuff and um, even a lot of uh, 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 WoW content creators have been kind of migrating mm-hmm. over to or they've been stopping WoW and doing more Final Fantasy so more people are playing it because of their the influencers um, and finding out how great the game is uh, especially story wise um, and they don't have the budget that Blizzard has for World of Warcraft and they've been doing this for 10 years versus uh, coming up soon in like three years so we're like at 17 years of world of warcraft mm-hmm. and they've had even larger numbers than they had even now so they've had chance to bolster their servers and be ready for this type of thing that legion launch legion one of the biggest uh well, world of warcraft expansions went very smoothly comparatively speaking uh, compared to like Wrath of the Lich King, the second their second expansion, mm-hmm. uh, where we would have basically what's happening now with Final Fantasy XIV is what was happening uh, with WoW and Wrath of the Lich King. So mm. they're kind of going through that sort of thing where logging queues and they were just and because of the pandemic, uh, even with this influx, it's been harder for them to get stuff done and again they the budget is at a different level right to be able to implement those things so uh yoshi p the uh producer director of final fantasy he's like he's been talking about uh posting about the congestions and what they're doing and unlike blizzard actually communicating very well with the their players and he's during it he's always saying i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and it's like it's okay it's okay <laughs> most players are like it's okay it's frustrating but um yeah. it, which is very different type of uh, player producer interaction and it's just different so i understand where why it's happening um i i just hope that they can be like okay especially square enix the the head honchos could look at this and be like, okay, Final Fantasy, we need to get you a wall budget. Right. Well, mm-hmm. and I I appreciate you like kind of explaining a little bit about that. I feel that, um, yeah, like it's just something that they hadn't predicted. And I will say most of the people that I see or nearly everyone that I see that's posting about it, and granted that's very small, uh, representation, they're just, I don't want to say they're chill, but like no one's freaking out. Like if anything... One of my favorite meme things I saw was someone posted about the Q wait, and they were like, this is actually the storyline of Endwalker. Like, this is just the whole game. Like, you just keep trying to log in and finding out where you are in Q. Like, you just kind of move in the queue, and like, that's it. That's all That's all the game is. There's nothing else to see. <laughs> yeah. It, it, Final, Fantasy's, Final Fantasy's community, uh, for the most part, because there's always these bags in any, any online community. But... Compared to WoW, the community is much more understanding. When just when uh, Nikita Yoshida uh, had uh, said that they were delaying, he was like, when he was announcing that during one of his live letters, uh, he he feels so much for the community that he's practically broke down crying because he had to admit that he selfishly was was delaying the launch of the game or the expansion because he wanted to do more weeks of QA. (laughs) And I'm like, that's how like in touch with this community that, that he is. So it's a very different prospect. And especially, I think it really, for the most part in this, they didn't have the wild bunch, uh, wild budget, service systems systems to handle this many players because Mm -hmm. they've never had this many players for the game right so yeah and it could be difficult like you know i mean even in social media some people talk about like you're just not prepared for when it happens meaning 
you know, like when you go viral or something really becomes super popular. Um, you like know, Wrath of the Lich it, King uh, with WoW. It's the same type of thing that happened. So, yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, uh, so it's been interesting, but mm. needless to say, I got caught up. So it is possible to do it. I'm going to warn you right now. Uh, yeah, there's so much content and that's not just the gameplay, like just the story stuff, you know, between mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the, the reborn and then the 2.1 to the 2.5 to the mm. three. And then the, the, like, and even the numbering system doesn't stay, it doesn't repeat in a pattern that makes sense. Anyways, I'm just kind of like, okay, just trying to follow it and make sense and all that stuff so yeah yeah the they have that main initial story which basically takes the leveling story that finishes and then there's a continuation on uh in in patch content so and usually yeah. the last couple of pat a last patch or two is basically the intro into the next expansion so yeah, no, I mean, it does seem pretty cool. I'm also appreciating, like, when I'm listening to this group that he plays with, um, in this newest version, how things have changed. So it's kind of comical to be like, oh, wow, like, this only does this, and this is different, and da da da. You know, like, it was, it's quite comical to, like, watch the, the post video stream, like, with them just, like, <laughs> discussing how things are, have modified and, you know, and discovering that. Oh, and I know. Out, like, what to do. So yeah. I have all jobs at 80. Well, except for Reaper yeah. and Sage, which just launched with this. But, I mean, besides that, that's, those are new versus yeah. changes. My main had a big change, and I'm still getting used to that. So Yeah, that's been interesting. So, yeah, uh, since the past month, it's been kind of busy and stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. Oh, and um, I decided to treat myself. Um, I got a new television. There's a whole adventure with that. Um <laughs> Needless to say, it like involved my living room being rearranged, buying a new piece of furniture, and the new TV, uh, getting a replacement for the TV, new peripheries. <laughs> it's been a lot, but <laughs> it's done, and I'm happy. So, yeah, it's done, and I'm done. So. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is that because I've rearranged, I realized that like my TV faces to the windows. Um, to the main windows of the living room, which face out to the street. So I don't think I haven't bothered to look, but I'm pretty sure like if the lights are off, like you'll be able to see that there's a television like, and there's like, you know, light moving or whatever, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't think it's going to be anything that they can discern what's on it. Yeah. Still, you know, get some sheer or full on blinds or curtains. I, I do. I have some, it. it's just, I hadn't really thought about that because before it faced, width wise oh. across the living room mm -hmm. -wise. so there was only like one small window that possibly people could kind of see flickering later or whatever Anyways. yeah i will say um as someone who has who walks around like neighborhoods are, are used to at least um it's rather interesting like walking past a, a house and like looking and seeing oh they've got a tv on they've got a big tv on some have some Big ass TV, so I don't mm -hmm. see that much. And um, I, I, you know, I'm walking, so I don't necessarily like stop and look to check what they're watching. Um, but I've had enough of a glimpse to kind of, depending on if there's any curtains or what have you to block it, I, I could probably discern what they're watching if I took time and actually looked at it. Oh, I know. Like I've, I've, you know, when I've walked in my neighborhood, I'm surprised how many people just have like their curtains open or whatever. And I'm just kind of like, you want me to see all your business? Mm -mm. No, ma'am. <laughs> I don't. Um, yeah. That is why. I mean, when we got the house, uh, I appreciate my landlord, or not landlord, my um, realtor, because one of the things he said was like. Um, I want like part of the agreement was that we would keep most of, if not all of the, um, uh, curtains and they're like, why would you want to do that? And then I realized why one, um, people can see in your house. So if they let, if the people who had moved out of the house had moved out and we hadn't moved in yet, people are just going to see empty house. Mm -hmm. And then two, I didn't have to worry about putting stuff everywhere because that is not 
I, I no, that I am not. I'm not. I am not that home decor person. I am not. If you come to our house, which I think Gary, you've been here. If you look on the walls and look around the house, you know where all that who all that shit is from. That's Jim. That is Jim. <laughs> that is not me. Right. <laughs> no, and, and I get that. Like, you know, getting a newer TV that's a little bit bigger, I had to rearrange some things um, like they were on the wall where the TV was going to sit in front of. And so, like, I ended up moving five framed things that were on different walls, like, mm-hmm. to bake. Because there was a set of six, now it's just a set of three, then I moved the bottom three over to this wall, and then what was here got moved to this other port, then what was here got to the, like, so it was all the shifting and, like, remeasuring, and, and uh, oh. so anyways, it's, but it's good, and it's done, um, you know, and I was able to donate some things, and, you know, so, yeah, it's all, it's all taken care of that way, so I'm happy. Anyways, that's enough about me. Yeah. Well. Then it sounds like we now need to go into <laughs> Gary. What's been going on over in the Facebooks? Um, we got a whole series of likes on Facebook uh, since this Yay. past month. Uh, so uh, we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us on Facebook: Asala Dula Mohammadi, Gray Kraus. Van Bearman, hey Van, Xander Fogel, Kenneth Quarles, Sean Christopher, and Alex Holmes, oh, and Christopher David. So thank you for liking us. Hey. Mr. Damon over on YouTube, I believe we have some feedback. Yeah, we do have some feedback. So, um, for our COL 582, which was our Rest in Peace X2 Pornhub question mark um, episode, we got a comment from XYZ, and it says, RIP, but I'm assuming he meant RIP. What happened to X2? Well, XYZ. Um, <laughs> we had a follow up show on this, actually. Yeah, this was an older <laughs> episode. Um, the I think this episode was about the whole credit card drama that caused X2 to remove all the um, personal content from the site um, and from X2 and Pornhub. Non-verified. Like, a non-verified, thank you. Unverified, I guess is the word. And then in follow-up to that, um, X2 no longer exists as a site. So... <laughs> Um, as of September, I think it was. I, yeah, yeah. Officially, I think it was September that it actually closed down. Closed down, but um, that's okay. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I don't think people were really enjoying it anyway. Uh, well, who knows? Anyway, anywho, <laughs> moving on. Um, so on COL 622, which was our Let's Talk About Sex Horror Stories, ah, um, Owen replied, LOL, Gary's story was weird. And then, ah, that was a ni- nice little wrap-up for Gar- from Gary. Cool. Um, on COL 6, wait, are you going to comment? I was just going to simply say, so that was the one where we uh, told, it was you and I, David, and we told uh, stories, and I ended up telling that scary bathhouse story. And then mm-hmm. remember at the end, we had that article where we found out about somebody who else who went to said location and oh, also yeah. had a kind of a crazy, creepy uh, experience mm-hmm. that wrote that little uh, story type article. Yes. Uh, that was that. what was at the end. I do remember that. Okay. Yeah. So on COL 623, which was what's going on for October 2020, Owen replied, "Um, to be clear, I wasn't saying I wanted to make Gary a pie, although that'd be one hot pie. Sticky sweet. I need to go now. Watch the reactions again about the Gary Apple thing. It's just interesting to see how different the responses are. Like, am I talking about baking a pie? baking Gary into a pie or turning Gary into an adult fantasy where he's the main part of a pie with his torso covered in pie filling and surrounded by an outline of pie crust. Again, I need to go now and 
do things. <laughs> Owen, you are welcome. Enjoy your fantasies. Um, on COL624, which was our uh, landscape of relationships unfriending, um, Owen said, uh, Lord of the Rings unfriending, like when the fellowship fell apart. Fair. I think it's been a minute since I've watched those movies. Okay. And then finally, on COL 625, let's talk about kink um, gear part four. Owen said, <laughs> claw la la la, la 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 la. La 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 la. la, 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 la. Well, it was because we were making fun of the fact uh, that the Cleveland leather annual weekend had moved to California for like their in between like because they're still doing Mm -hmm. it in Cleveland in the spring so we were like oh how convenient there's an LA in Claw (laughs) so it's Claw Law I guess the Cleveland LA weekend yeah yeah or the Claw LA weekend LA Claw it is LA Claw Anyway, there you go. Correct. Jeffrey. Anyways, over on Twitter. We we always have fun ones here. Uh, with the uh, Merrick Plaza. Uh, Bear Claw 0991. Uh, Bader Cub 2. Mark 54657799. Spice Spice. Lucas F. Nine five one zero five five. Ver de Bear. Jose Gon. Four four five one six nine two nine. I almost feel like we need to switch this around because you know how I feel about those like numbers. <laughs> hey, sometimes the numbers like have a meaning, and other times I think they don't. Like I think it's just a random generator kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like. Usually it's like, nope, you can't have Bader Cub, but you can have Bader Club. You can have Bader Cub too. You know, hey, the Bader Cub oh. too. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. But when you get like, you start getting into like more than at least two or three digits, that's when it's getting excessive. But I don't but know I what these numbers be... are. I'm hoping think... they're not like PPI. Like I hope it's not personal information. I you think know, that what it is using. is it's uh, it's autom- it's like if if I remember correctly, it's automated. It's an automatic generated. Not, like if you sign up for Twitter or what have you, this is what you get. Pe- Usually, people, like your people, first you or know last you name can change and a bunch that. of numbers. <laughs> yeah, you know you can change that. Can change it, but people sometimes don't because you could technically change just your name. Like you can change your title. Yeah, you can change everything. Yeah. Yes, you can change everything, but some people don't. Yeah. And that's okay, even though Jeff doesn't like reading numbers. It's when when you have a username, don't put in a bunch of numbers like that. They're not putting in the numbers. The numbers are being put in for That's them. the problem is that they're not <laughs> changing it. Because I, I swear it, it asks I, you, it's like here's a suggestion. You're yucky. You don't have to anyways. Okay, the point. Get off my Gary, <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary, tell us about the past five shows, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we did uh, episode 623 was what's going on for the month of October. And then we did a flashback episode uh, to episode 338, this, that, or other from the waist down, um, which was back in the good old Tumblr days. Ah, uh, Tumblr. Now it's FYI. Twitter. We still have it. We technically have a Tumblr. It's just the show. Nobody's nobody's on there though. Like it cracks me up. About once every quarter, I think it is. Once every three months, I get an email from Tumblr. It's like, "Hey, we missed you. You haven't been on in a while." Yeah, no shit, bitch. Like, like you, you <laughs> tanked your platform with your bullshit. No, there, there's so, a reason why you had a mass exodus of people. Yeah, I, I'm not there anymore. Thank you though. <laughs> Anyways, uh, then we did COL 
says here, well, 624, landscape of relationships, unfriending, where Edward Angelini Cook uh, joined us and we talked about, you know, the importance of uh, the relationships you have in your life and giving them, you know, value and meaning. And if they don't have uh, importance to you, then maybe you shouldn't have them. Get out. 625 was let's talk about Kate Gear uh, part four. Uh, so Cubs is aka Tony return and join us again. Uh, so we talked about psychology and headspace. Um, so I suggest you go check that out. Uh, and if you haven't uh, listened to the whole series, uh, there's three other episodes that go with it. Um, so yeah. And uh, 626, let's talk about food. Last week's episode was the white stuff. Uh, mm. A bit of a departure, but we, uh, we ended up talking about drinks in the holiday season specifically the main one was about the concept of eggnog which is not necessarily white um <laughs> and some other drinks as well so yeah. it's mostly white yeah i mean it's kind of like a certain bodily fluid you know <laughs> exactly <white. laughs> all right mm. with that it's time for this <laughs> There you go. That's that. Uh, I'm going to start off with Dem Tats because they didn't have any uh, actual title. Uh, ended up subscribing to him uh, as well. And it's just a guy taking a selfie, and he's got some pretty nice tats, as well as a nice belly, oh, a nice beard. Yes, he does. A nice bald head. Basically, button, 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 button. For me, at least. Dustin. That you're lovely. Yes, that is a good it's picture. I like it. It's just a little too far away. I want to get closer. Like 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 this close. Listen to you. <laughs> I'm trying I mean, if you if you look in it, if if you look in his full feed, uh, he does have have some where he's much closer. Also I'm with sure this hubby. Who really I then intrigued. also followed. So he's like in his office or something. I'm really intrigued by this cutter apparatus thing behind him. At first I thought it was a <laughs> keyboard. And I was like, no, that's not AK keys. And then I thought it was like a printer or something, but it's not. I don't, I don't know. Oh, that's so. a butt. Or side butt. But. Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. I'm not, sure how I feel about these, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about these tattoos that go like back around the head. But. Again, I, I kind of want to see it up close to kind of get an idea behind it. Wow. Oh. Just trace it with your tongue? I mean, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, lovely, 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 and lovely. Another gorgeous tattooed to balded bearded yeah. man. This is just yes, button, yes, yes. button, button, button. Tattoos, beard, bald, and belly. So nice. Far. Mm. The yeah. three B's and a T. All right, Damon. So I have a couple. Um, the first one's the more you know eye candy. The next one is not. Well, the first one is from Wolfbound. Um, it's Meet Leroy. Um, so Wolfbound is run by, um, Slate Travis in Chicago. Um, he does, um, uh, bondage type videos and photos of, um, people of all sizes. And I believe, um, all genders, pretty sure. Um, uh, it's mostly, you know, bearish types, but it's usually larger, you know, bodied individuals and we get to meet this adorable cub named Leroy. Um yeah. And it's it's um quite the pictures. Uh, especially the last one. Where he's tied up and gagged and all that stuff. It's perfect for delivery, just <laughs> <laughs> That carpeting is pretty trippy. <laughs> it's not 
busy visually. So it, for those that you know aren't seeing it, um, and you might be disappointed when you see the picture if you just listen to that one comment, but it's got this very interesting depth of field aspect to it. It's very basic as far as a print. It's black with like some gray blocks. Uh, they're striping, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Like just like in the very first picture, looking at him and he's leaning back, I'm kind of like, it looks like he's going to fall into it. Oh. I don't know how to explain it. Anyways, it's just... It's not quite an optical illusion, but it's it's pretty interesting. Anyways. So I'm gonna comment now. This is literally the second comp, the second picture, Gary, where you've been looking at pictures and you've commented on anything but the thing in front. <laughs> but the subject of the picture. The, yeah, he talked about the, the cutter machine in the back of the picture with the heavily. Not, the, I mean, come guy. on, you've done this before. I know I have, but still, I just, I just wanted to, I thought it was funny to just comment again. I'm sorry. I'm disappointing y'all and not living up to hornball status. Apparently I I mean, isn't that the point of this? This is what we originally intended the segment to be about. Anyways, moving on. Yeah. So the sex video or the next one is the actual video. Um, (laughs) And I called it Shablams. It doesn't actually have a um, a title, um, but it's from. Oh, that's the wrong. Why did you open there? Fuck you. Sorry. What? Open. Thank you. Um, it is from at docs underscore gay, and it's just a fun compilation of people having some pretty tragic falls potentially and it didn't just jump again to some death drops and what have you from i'm assuming um like voguing competitions and uh, what have you i just i just think it's hilarious i love it um it's not long but it's really awesome to watch on repeat just saying because <laughs> these people are the the normal uh, the normal people I say are in some pretty awful jump situations, <laughs> like slipping on ice, um, falling off a, a um, like a, ba- a, a bowl, bowl a pull up. I think bowl there's bars. one where the guy is um, like drunk, tipsy, and just falling backwards in a field. So yeah. I just, yeah, I love it. I think it's hilarious. And um, it does have music behind it. So, yeah. Which is why you are, I did not unmute it. Yes. Didn't mean to do that. Shablam. Nice. Gary. Um, mine does not have a title, but I called it Dar- Dad Bear Exhibit um, because um, Exhibit B2 is the Twitter handle, and it's this very, very handsome gentleman. Um, and he's just sitting there uh, in a t shirt with a long sleeve uh, button down overshirt and some uh, tight fitting kind of chino pants. Um, with like, you know, perfect beard syndrome. It's this beautiful full white beard giving you a sort of like, you know, Santa not in the suit vibes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And tight pants has outline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's VPL, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got like VPL and like almost knuckle up in this shit. Free ball in it. Probably. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. And in the comment thread, if you scroll and you look, our very own Owen uh, commented, you look like Dean Dubois here. And Ben replied, well, that is a very nice compliment. Yeah. It is a good picture. And it is a very handsome man. Like, mm-hmm. I, yeah. Did I? Did I think I like this. Yep, I did like it. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's um, he's, he's very, mm-hmm. very handsome. And based the, off the, what the I can VPL see from other things not... in his feed, that VPL is accurate. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, well, hello there. This <laughs> is Twitter. It won't take long. This did for me. Ooh. Well, there's it's on the third. Yeah, right. Yep. 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 Just, just that's, two days that's, ago. That's it's it's pretty and, it's very nice. Um, 18th, uh, he has a couple of videos which kind of like, uh, which demonstrate the VPL uh, oh, in action. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, hold on. And we're scrolling. Oh, I see now. Wow. Oh, 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 geez. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um. <laughs> see, see why I say that VPL is accurate? Damn. I, 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 um, um. <laughs> oh, look, he, he he, you a hit follow candle on my birthday. How nice of him! He gave you a birthday candle mm-hmm. on my birthday. There's a lovely birthday candle picture. Very much. Oh, oh. I'll have to keep him in mind oh. if I'm ever in the Atlanta, Georgia region. Uh huh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so that was my Twitter pick. <sighs> All right. Uh, am I fo- I am not, and I will now be following you. Um, error corrected. <laughs> hmm. I said error corrected. <laughs> Damn. <sighs> Moving on into the links, uh, I'm just going to recommend drop Dropout TV. Um, it is a if you remember College Humor. Or have heard uh, heard us uh, mention Dimension Twenty or I'm um, actually. Um, they created their own streaming service, which they called Dropout, and you can watch all the unedited shows because I know, like, if you were watching the, like when the full series of Dimension Twenty on YouTube, they're censored. Um, mm. You can. Uh, Dropout TV, you can watch them fully uncensored and not have to worry about ads or any other YouTube bullshit. Um, it's like four ninety nine a month, like five bucks. Mm-hmm. So you could like subscribe, for, and they have a free trial. Mm-hmm. But you could also just subscribe to a month or something, and then uh, watch things as they come out and totally uncensored. Uh, I'm watching the Unsleeping City right now. Ah, you know, during those long Final Fantasy fourteen years, <laughs> while you're waiting. Yep. So nice, simple, easy recommendation. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so I have two documentaries this month uh, that I recommend. Uh, one of them was on PBS. It came out on I think National Coming Out Day back in October. Um, and if you uh, visit the link that we have, um, look up Cured, C-U-R-E-D, documentary with PBS. I believe you could watch it for free online. You just have to put in who your local PBS station is here in the U.S. Um, mm. It's a really uh, nice documentary about how homosexuality was considered a medical diagnosis um, for a mental health and how the steps that were taken by activists to have that removed in 1973. Um, and I was already kind of privy aware of some of these facts, but it was really nice to be able to see interviews with in legacy with the people that were a part of it and some video footage or audio recordings of people who are no longer with us, but that were a part of that activism back then mm-hmm. and the steps that they took. And basically they went from the inside out. They like, they basically told the American psychiatric association, like you're full of shit. Like, and you don't even know what you're talking about and you're disregarding (laughs) studies and you're not paying attention. And by the way, some of you in your own membership are homosexual, but you don't know it because they live in the closet in fear because of your own diagnoses and how you treat them. So, um, so I recommend that. And then also, if you have Disney Plus, I highly recommend um, watching the Fauci documentary. So it is on Dr. Anthony Fauci, um, the director of the National Institutes of Allergy um, and uh, Infectious Diseases at the NIH here in the U.S. Um, It's really interesting. It talks about him and his work and his relationship. I was so surprised at how they put it together. And they talk about like some of the modern day stuff and the things he faced in the previous administration. Um, Mm. 
So yeah, um, yeah, you know, as and he's very forthright. And I was already quite well aware of this because I included some stuff about Fauci in the World AIDS Day program I referenced before. And he, um, you know, was very frank and very open. He's like, I was young. I was, you know, basically fresh out of, you know, school um, and was starting to work in the in the field of infectious disease and was working on something completely unrelated. And then HIV came on the scene and he was part of, you know, the group that worked on it initially with those cases back in 1981, 40, year, 40 years ago. So um, can't sing his praises enough in terms of the contributions he's made. So. Oh. Yeah, that's it. And with that, I think that's the end of the show. Play ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 block 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our entourage chat at tinyurlcom slash telegram dash col and uh, if you want to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can follow our Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various uh, col accoutrements, such t-shirts, hats, uh, mugs. I happen to have my my mug here. Uh, over at zazzle at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of this, those designs, such as the uh, Consent to My Four Play shirts that uh, David is wearing, were designed by Smashy, uh, where you can get uh, other designs of his unrelated to us at uh, Smashy's uh, page on TeePublic at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron to us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us some cash at people.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You'll find us on various... Um, Podcasting directly, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, Audible. Um, and uh, you find me anywhere in the internet as Box That Box, Poppy Box, Cub Box, something or other, or Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where we are continuing uh, our slow journey to Gracklestug in Bears and Dragons uh, Out of the Abyss. And eventually we'll be getting back to Final Fantasy fourteen streaming after I complete uh, everything on my main, and then I'll come back. Uh, and probably mm -hmm. leveling um, through Endwalker, leveling Emigos on instead of Essigos on stream uh, through the mm -hmm. MSQ using the Reaper job, which is new to the expansion. Damon? Nice. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, um, you can find me at TheaterCub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now.